Hi, I'm Dale. I'm Clay. We're from EMF Ball Joints Rod Ends. Is that how you do? It's actually EMF components. chassis components or EMF yeah, rod ends or EMF ball joints. No, that's okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, this is a, a box out of the Dodge uh, 3500, I guess, uh, six bolt top plate. And uh, we got curious one day and uh, decided to tear it apart and see the inner workings and uh, see if we can come up with some new ideas of why your truck steers like junk. And what actually causes death wobble or what the the hydraulic kickback <laughs> and the flutter it's uh i've always been strongly against people thinking it's got anything to do with the steering dampener and people have many other theories and i think we actually know what it is and they all suck so anyhow first thing we noticed when we took this thing apart is how much drag there is on everything in this box. So we've got the, the piston out of the box right now. Just have the sector shaft in here. And if you, if you wanna come over here, you can just kinda gauge how tight this is to move back and forth. And this is solely seal drag. When we take the seals out, you can actually move this back and forth. So all this memory steer that we're trying to solve by adjusting this and adjusting that, it's probably right in the steering box. Now, the interesting thing is this six pin box is actually an awesome box compared to the old boxes because it has a, bear, a roller bearing in the upper and lower part of the sector shaft. The older ones just had a bushing and a bearing, a bushing on the top, bearing in the bottom. Uh, however, uh, and the old ones also used to leak through here, if you crack the nut, I mean, you should have a little copper sealer in there or something, but uh, the new boxes leak less because there's actually like hydraulic seals on the shaft that prevent the oil from going past. But this is causing a problem because of the seal drag that Dale's talking about. The seals are so tight around the shaft that actually, that's what's causing this, which that should actually move quite a bit easier. You'd, you'd assume that that drag would be on the piston inside. Now, Part of that is your groove diameter on the inside of uh, the chamber. Two thousandths of an inch on the machining can mean a tight seal or not a tight seal. It'll still seal well, but if somebody's just ripping through machining the parts and they go a little tight, it's gonna cause this drag. I make hydraulic rams and I basically blueprint all of mine because of that. So in a mass production environment like this stuff, I'm gonna guarantee you that the guys are probably gonna be all over the place. So when you buy a new box, or you, whatever, your box could be different from the next box, could be different from whatever box. This is like a massive uh, problem with these things, or um, like this problem solving. I guess it's, it's just, it's hard to diagnose after the steering box, when the steering box is this snug. You're trying to diagnose stuff that may not be a problem, when the whole issue may be in the steering box. Whether it's a fix or not, I don't know, but it was just interesting to see, to try and get to the bottom of it. And also dealing with customers that just refuse to believe that it's something like this, or how could it be that? Because, oh my God, they can't actually manufacture things wrong, or other shops, just mechanics saying you can't adjust these things. Uh, those guys just aren't real mechanics. They, they don't know. Uh, it's an adjustment screw to adjust lash. It's possible, you should do it. You should do it every time you put a box in. If you're at a shop and they say, oh, you can't do it, they're just not confident enough or maybe didn't learn. Uh, it's good that they're not adjusting it because they don't know how, but... Um, it is an adjustment and we'll show you why. Yeah. So I'm gonna show you what you're actually adjusting when you're adjusting the steering box. So I'm just gonna bust the jam nut loose while holding this. It's not a serviceable box, so I'm just gonna back this right off so we can do a whole bunch of adjusting. All right, so. Maybe. So that's basically as 
loose as you're going to get it. You can see the movement. Now what that is actually doing is, when I pull this out, I'll show you, they're tapered cut teeth that mesh into your piston. So when you take this and adjust it down, you're actually putting the teeth into mesh. Much like setting a gear set up with backlash, it's essentially the same thing in your steering box. So I'm going to take this apart now. So this is the sector shaft out of the box. And if you look close, you can actually see that the teeth are milled on an angle. If I hold it like this, you can kind of see the angle that everything was milled at. You can also see a thickness difference in the tooth here. So basically what that's doing is it's coming into mesh with this. So when you're adjusting the box, you're actually pushing down. So this would be tightening, tightening, tightening the box to get it into mesh more. So that's what we're actually doing when we're adjusting the steering box. When your steering box is loose, you'll have play in between the teeth. When you adjust it, it's taking the play out like that. Hard to see with it out of the box, but that's what you get. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention is that these teeth are cut oblong. These are short, this is long. So when you're adjusting the steering box, it's very important to have this thing on the high spot, which means centered in the tightest part of the sweep. So it'll be tight here. When you turn and roll off, you'll get slop. When you turn off, you'll get slop. So what we have here is the, the piston and then the worm gear. Uh, there's rollers, uh, bearings that kind of sit in here and swivel and this is what gives you the, the motion of your piston. So one way will be one direction, one way will be the other direction. This is the end support, this is where your pressure hose and your return line goes in. Um, there's, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there is orifices in here. I'm not sure which direction, but one is for left, one is for right, for fluid flow. And basically what happens is the fluid gets sent in here, pressurizes internally inside the inner spool valve, which will control fluid pressure and direction. So essentially, steering wheel will be attached to this. You give it input, you can see the, the rock. These windows are what send pressure to the direction that you're turning. So you steer, it starts a reaction, sends pressure to one side or the other side, depending on which way you're turning, and that's what gives you your power assist. What we were getting at initially is I wanted to get at the torsion bar inside of this, because we've talked about the torsion bar before and how it affects road feel, etc., etc. So basically, we've torn it apart. And this is what we're talking about with the torsion rod. Now, it's tiny. It's a big truck, it's a tiny rod. It's to make it feel like a car. I, we feel that this is the problem why we're getting hydraulic feedback through everything else. And we'll assemble it again, and we'll show you what we mean on the... So the hydraulic, sorry, yeah. the hydraulic feedback he's talking about is what we believe is death wobble. Actually, it's not what we believe it is. We know it's, we, it, we know it's a death wobble. It's because this bar is so light, once death wobble, I'm just gonna go through this. Yep. Once death wobble starts to occur, what he was talking about here earlier was, as you turn the wheel, this piston moves this way or this way, and the solenoid puts oil pressure to this side or this side of this piston, which goes this way or this way. This torsion rod, and we're gonna give, uh, <laughs> we're gonna do a demonstration here in a bit, but this torsion rod's opening left or right, and when death wobble starts to happen, what it is is you're putting pressure on the left, or on this side, which is steering the sector shaft this way, but you're, once that shake starts to happen, that torsion rod, is so weak and you're holding on your steering wheel hard 
that it's opening left and the right, so it's chattering like this, and we'll show you later. But it starts going like this, so it starts adding oil pressure this side, this side, this side, this side really fast. That's why when you slow down, you can come to an almost stop and the thing's still hammering back and forth like our other video. Right. Right? And I was like, hey, check this out. This is wrong. <laughs> yeah. So this, it's, it's oil pressure being delivered from this little valve, from this movement here, going back and forth like that. So him doing that is opening left and right. So it's putting oil pressure from left to right side, which is putting say 1300 PSI from this side to this side to this side to this side and you're actually when you're hanging onto your steering wheel trying to stop it you're actually helping engage that. The other thing that help, uh, accents that is these intermediate shaft bushings in here. That's why we put these guys in because these bushings allow this to go back and forth. So if you're holding onto your steering wheel and that little torsion rod's going back and forth this is also hammering it so it just pounds and uh, like I said we'll the demonstration here and show it, but these help reduce your death wobble chances huge. Actually, letting off your throttle, like in the other video, right? That's a good thing. And this is what we were talking about when we were driving and doing our death wobble video. What we think is if you had a magic way of like shutting the vehicle off mid death wobble, I'm pretty sure that we could get it to stop. Yeah, or if you could shut the hydraulic flow hydraulic off. flow off. Because we think it's a, it's a, when you get the pressure behind it with the mechanical actuation, we think that's what starts the chain reaction. Yeah, I mean, now you have to have something that starts it, like a bad tire, a bad balance tire, a poorly worn tire, combined with a bad bushing, which allows slop or too much flash in the box, which it's on an old truck, or anything bad drag gonna, links, bad drag links are huge. Yep. Anything that's going to allow the tires to be free from everything else. But it always seems to happen under throttle, so your pressure's up and your flow's up. And usually when you're turning a corner, so you've already actuated one side of the valve. Right, so and you when got you, pressure on one side. When you hit it, hit the bump, and it goes, <laughs> it flutters, it allows, allows this. So it goes from left to right quick, and then you get the flutter going, it just keeps hammering. Right you are. I think so. <laughs> So this is my sector shaft out of this box. This is my sector shaft out of this box. It's the second gen. It's obviously much smaller. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, what we wanted this to talk about is like the adjuster screw on the top end of this. So when we pulled this one apart, it's actually pretty floppy. There was lots of heavy grease in the end of this. And uh, so there's no real drag. I should actually add to this too. Uh, this is <laughs> just touching the shaft. Yeah, just the tip. But uh, this is what this is like the turning resistance in your box once you once everything's assembled and it's all set. This is actually what it's your top of your sector shaft spinning on. So we noticed. Um, so this box here, it's a high end box. Actually, it's an aftermarket one. And the customer bought it, put it in, and complained about his steering being all over the place. I'm like, ah, whatever, it's a good box. But uh, we get a lot of customers that complain about their trucks and their, their steering. And always it's the ball joints problem. And mechanics are constantly like, nope, oh, just put in different ball joints. And the ball joints they put in are stiffer, and they actually give you memory steer. And they always tell them, oh, it'll, it'll wear in. And you just get used to driving the truck that way, and then you're used to driving it. and. That's what it is. But anyways, this is, <laughs> what I want to show is that this is a, it's a good box, brand new, but you can buy a brand new box and still wind up with a stiff box and it shouldn't be, but I didn't even know this would be like this, but you can't, like Dale was saying, this is like nice and loose as it should be. And this one, you can't even turn it. Like it's, it's stiff. Oh, like a Allen key here, yeah. So you can turn it with an Allen key, but it's like, there's a lot of load on there. Yeah, like it's... For no reason. Yeah. So, when this box was assembled at whatever factory or whatever, uh, this is a... Okay, we diagrammed this one out to show you. So, when they assemble it, they assemble it by screwing this collar in. And then once they get to where they feel it's tight enough, they swedge it. So, they'll smack it 
like they did this one and lay it over in there. So whoever assembled this one, on whatever day, maybe his girlfriend was mad at him, maybe he was hungover, I don't know. But they obviously tightened that up too much. And that's super tight, whereas this one's not. So, just because you buy a brand new box doesn't mean the box isn't the problem or the reason that your truck's steering funny. Uh, again, mechanics will always go to a ball joint, but a lot of times it's this, and it's because they don't have the ability to go in and check this, or you know, they gotta charge you $150 an hour and get it in and out in two hours and charge you five hours or whatever. Um, I'm not really not about that. And most mechanics are gonna find this anyways. Like I say, we were curious, we decided to rip boxes apart, and this is what we're finding. A lot of unnecessary drag in the boxes. Why? This is, should be the loosest part in the steering system. I guess it should be the tightest part in the steering system, but it should have the most road feel. And when you have this much drag here, seals, etc., you're losing road feel. And it's also taking effort away from steering. It takes that much more effort to steer down the road when there's X amount of drag. And I'm not hacking on mechanics, just what a mechanic instantly refuses to accept that it's something like this, then I have a problem with that mechanic. Um, Just because it's new doesn't mean it's good. Right. And, you know, again, <laughs> they focus on the ball joints being the problem, but we spend so much time making sure that those ball joints are perfect, and we go through things that we don't even need to go through to figure out why a truck's steering weird, <laughs> when all we should really be concentrating on is making the ball joint turn really well, which we do. Right? Sure. Uh, so what we have here is the worm gear that we were looking at before. Um, we have the inner spool valve pinned into the torsion bar. And we've taken the outer spool valve off just for demonstration purposes, just so we can show you something neat. Okay, so Clay's gonna put the wrench on. Okay. So let's say you're driving down the road <coughs> and you can see so this is where your valving opens and closes and stuff. So as you're turning, we got this locked off. So you're turning, there's resistance here. You're turning, it opens the valve. Now this is lugged into here. So this will be stationary on the shaft. So this is actually opening and closing windows inside of here. You but can see how that operates right now. I'm turning right, so I'm opening that valve. I center, I turn left, I open the valve. So my power steering is working. Now, if you back up here a bit. So I'm driving down the road. I got a ton of pressure in my truck. I'm kind of steering to the left. So, okay. So you watch me steering, the torsion bar is moving and my valve is open. So we're turning and then I hit a bump, say on Deerfoot or whatever. Uh, I hit the bump and it releases because the front end of my truck's unloaded a bit and I'm turned and oh all of a sudden God. I got oh my death God. wobble. It's going back and forth. Now imagine if you have hydraulic pressure behind that. It's just going to continue. And it's shooting the piston back and forth, so it's fighting itself, so it's going this way, which it should be releasing the other way, so there's force that way, then it comes this way, then it goes this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. So that's why under pressure, like when the RPMs are up, is when death wobble happens, and not when you're off the throttle, and 90% of the time when you're turning. That's death wobble. So in summary, uh, we just wanted to show you a short video of just what we, we found. Again, just curious to see what was inside of the box. Um, we we'll hope this gives you a little bit of insight to what we're doing with, when we're talking about uh, steering box adjustment, when we're talking about torsion bars, uh, spool valves, etc. cetera. Um, I've been dying to show that torsion bar for about five years. Um, so uh, smash that like button and uh, subscribe. Um, Maple Surf Challenge is coming.